Hello and welcome. Um, we're really pleased to have you all here today. Um, I'm Martha Schmitz. I'm from NISGUA, the Network in Solidarity with the People of Guatemala. Um, today we're going to be experimenting a little bit um, with simultaneous interpretation. Um, so we have uh, two people here who are involved in the um, case of the Achi women, uh, the sexual violence case. And they're going to be speaking um, a little bit about that case. Um, and th soon they're going to be presenting themselves. Um, but we just ask for like a little bit of patience because we are experimenting a little bit um, with the piece of interpretation, which will be largely simultaneous and perhaps a little bit of consecutive. Um, and so, yes, we'll, we'll just try this out. So anyway, it's lovely to see you all here today. And we really thank you for your presence. And I'm going to pass it along so that each person can say their name and where they're from. Hola, soy Gloria Reyes, eh, abogada del bufete jurídico de Rabinal y estará llevando el caso de las 36 mujeres H de violencia sexual. Hi, I'm Gloria Reyes. I'm here. I'm the lawyer um, at the Rabinal Legal Clinic, and I'm um, bringing forward the case at, on the legal team of the sexual, my uh, sexual violence case. Soy Doña Paulina Chupata Alvarado, soy de la aldea de Rabina Alvarado La Paz. So my name is Paulina Ispata Alvarado, and I'm from a village here in Rabinal, Baja Verapaz. And my name is Lisa Rankin. I am the Guatemala coordinator for Breaking the Silence, the Maritimes Guatemala Breaking the Silence Network, a solidarity network between Guatemala and the Maritimes of Canada. And just to let folks know that this call, this webinar today is going to be um, recorded, and so you'll be able to watch it again and again. So today we're going to be starting with a few questions to Gloria Perez, um, and we're going to be asking her a little bit about her involvement and her opinions in the case. Um, so what we would like first to hear is how you got started being involved with this case. In 2012, I started working. Here in the legal clinic in Rabinal, um, promoting women's rights. In 2016, I started working as a lawyer for uh, on cases involving violence against women. With the experience that I had working on human rights and then also working um, on crimes of violence against women, the uh, Rabinal Legal Clinic hired me to work on this case um, of sexual violence against uh, Mayachi women. Um, and then we also wanted to know um, what has happened up till now. If you can give us a little more information about what has gone on in the case and what are the next steps in the case. Yo creo que en, en este proceso de violencia sexual pues se ha tenido desde el año pasado en mayo capturas de seis personas la cual están ahora en la cárcel. When this case began last year, um, there has been the capture or the detention of six uh, former civil defense patrol patrolmen who are currently um, in in detention. Aunque el caso es de 36 mujeres, pero actualmente se está trabajando hechos even though the case um, is brought forward by, by 36 women, um, it's also involving eight specific women um, who were the direct victims of, um, of the attacks by these eight people. Because we know that these women were the survivors of. Repetir, porque. Eh, que estos, eh, están ahora en la están 
ocho mujeres que ellas se conocieron eh, a sus víctimas dentro de la violencia que vio donde con Víctor Mata. So these women um, are the people who like have um, had recognized violence committed by these um, civil defense patrollers during the internal armed conflict. Uh, actualmente, pues, ese, el proceso ha avanzado y, y los seis están en prisión y estamos comenzando la etapa intermedia en donde ya este, ya se ha tenido un avance considerado donde el Ministerio Público ya leyó la acusación en contra de los acusados y los abogados querellantes y las víctimas ya han dado sus argumentos y ahora falta eh, la, los argumentos de la defensa como también la resolución de la justicia. So actually the case has moved forward quite a bit. Um, the, the folks are already in prison, the people who are accused are already in prison, and we're in the intermediate phase right now. So what that means is the judge is deciding whether or not it will go to a public trial. Um, there's been significant advances in the case. Um, there's been a public accusation, um, and they've had the crimes like um, they're, they're indicted for those uh, charges and the lawyers, the legal team and the victims have been able to present their own arguments. And so now what we're waiting for is for the defense to present its arguments um, and as well as for the judge to make a decision about um, whether the case will go to a public trial. La, la audiencia en donde los de la defensa van a presentar los argumentos va a ser el día de mañana de mayo y también pues eh, como es para complementar todos los argumentos y ya después la juez va a tomar el tiempo para resolver eh, si van a juicio los imputados por el caso de violencia sexual durante el conflicto armado en contra de estas ocho mujeres. So actually the next the next uh, phase of the trial um, is actually going to happen tomorrow. So the defense will be presenting their arguments. Um, and the, the judge will take those arguments into account to make their decision um, going forward. The judge will have like some time to make their decision. Um, and and uh, from there, they'll decide whether or not that the case um, of violence, sexual violence against the eight women who are directly victimized by these civil defense patrols will go to public de uh, debate. Pues yo considero que por ahora eh, el Ministerio Público ya ha presentado todos los documentos de investigación que tiene a su alcance y que también el bufete ha contribuido en aportar para que la juez eh, emite una resolución favorable a favor de las mujeres y que se acepte la acusación y que se mande a juicio a los seis acusados que es lo que buscamos en la búsqueda de justicia tanto las mujeres como la asociación bufete jurídica. So up until now, um, the, the uh, public prosecutor's office has presented all of the documents that are relevant to this case. Um, and the Rabinal Legal Clinic has also played a huge part in terms of providing documentation and testimony. Um, and we think that there are all the elements necessary for there to be a favorable resolution from the judge so that the case will move on to a public debate phase and so that they can get justice for the women um, who, who survived. Cuando la juez resuelva eh, la resolución que, que estamos esperando, eh, si es favorable en, en, a favor de las mujeres, entonces vamos, van a también señalar otra audiencia donde se especifica los medios de investigación y qué es lo que va a aprobar cada uno de los medios de investigación que aporta el Ministerio Público, como, como también la Asociación Bufete Jurídico y las víctimas. So um, if the judge does make a decision um, in favor of, of the women um, so that the court, so that the case does go to trial, um, what the judge will then ask for is that um, they provide investiga investigative um, pieces and they'll define what needs to be investigated by the um, public prosecutor's office, by the bufete, uh, which is the Rabina Legal Clinic, and by the survivors. And I'm just going to take a pause here really quickly. Um, can folks please turn off their cameras for the moment um, and select uh, Nisqua screen as the primary screen? Sorry to add a technological piece to it, but since we're recording, we're actually going to be recording other people's screens. And so we'd like it, uh, if possible, to go onto Nisqua screen.
Thanks, Garth. <laughs> um, and uh, do you mind also, Garth, uh, sorry to single you out here, but <laughs> if you could um, click on our screen so it shows up as like your full screen. For some reason on our camera, um, we're only seeing your, I, I, <laughs> your I, I, <laughs> what you're seeing. I will try. I I'm, if I knew how, I would do it in, instantly. Um, we're going to see if we can. Is it one yeah. of these little icons at the bottom? Sorry for the technological difficulties. And we're here. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. Um, OK. Thank you so much for <laughs> bearing with us as we're working through these uh, technological difficulties. Um, and so those are pretty much the advances that have gone on right now, and so we'll still um, be waiting for the next steps, but those are what you can share right now. Um, so we would like to also ask a little bit about what is the greater significance of this case, um, both at the national level and at the international level? Um, and how does it play a part in the larger trajectory of justice, it, like work for justice in Guatemala? Pues yo considero que es un caso bastante importante porque es un segundo caso en Guatemala de violencia sexual seguido de, de un caso de esclavitud eh, doméstica y sexual de eh, que se sentenció en el 2006 en Sepulzarco, que es un grupo de mujeres de Archí, y ahora es un segundo caso de violencia sexual. Eh, considero que para la justicia guatemalteca es muy importante porque eh, de esta manera pues, las mujeres uh, se animan a denunciar la demás violencia eh, que, uh, que sufrieron durante el conflicto armado. Y considero de que también este, para Guatemala es muy importante porque sentar un precedente del cual que la violencia contra la mujer eh, es castigada. Por eso es que se busca a través de las víctimas y del pete jurídico que se, se logre condenar estos tipos de hechos de violencia que ha ocurrido en, en contra de las mujeres, ya que en Guatemala existe mucha violencia y el racismo también ha permitido que la violencia sigue persistiendo en las comunidades rurales, a la población indígena, por lo tanto, considero que es muy importante el avance de esta denuncia de estos hechos de violencia y sobre todo al lograr justicia, considero que también contribuye a la educación y formación tanto de hombres y mujeres, no solo a nivel de Guatemala, sino que a nivel internacional, ya que las violaciones de derechos humanos en contra de mujeres no solo se da en Guatemala, pero Guatemala también es uno de los países eh, donde existe más violencia. De, de todo el mundo. So this case is really historic in that it's the second case um, in Guatemala where there is um, prosecution of sexual violence. So this comes after the 2016 sentence for the Sepulcerco case, um, where they were sentenced for um, domestic and sexual slavery uh, that was committed against Kekchu women. Um, it's really setting an important precedent because um, it now uh, shows that women can denounce the violence, that the sexual violence that was committed against them and that they survived during the internal armed conflict. It's also really important in that it sets a precedent um, that there will be a punishment if violence is committed against women. And there's like, con there's um, factors that are, uh, go together of both racism and violence that communities live and that violence has been allowed to stay in a community. Um, and so this also allows us to contribute to the education um, at the national level and at the international level um, that shows that, there, uh, that the human rights violations committed against women um, will have consequences. Y sobre todo lo que se pretende con esto es que ya no se vuelvan repetir los hechos de violencia, tanto en conflictos armados como también se ve dando a nivel ahora local, digamos a nivel en la época actual sigue siendo la violencia en contra de mujeres. Entonces lo que pretende es eh, lograr la justicia, es educar a esta población en donde se pretende que, que este, se, se castiguen a, a estos hechos de violencia para que ya no se vuelva a repetir en contra de las mujeres y de esta de etna, etna, como también de otras etnias. 
So um, what is the most important factor of this is that um, it shows that this will not happen again, um, that there won't be the same violations of, uh, of human rights, um, nor at the local that we allow violence against women to go forward. So it educates people so that these um, crimes are not committed again at either the, the local or the national level and that they aren't committed against um, peoples of other, of other descents. Um, well, we would like to also hear, like, these cases are complicated to bring forward. We'd like to hear a little bit about what have been the challenges that you've faced in bringing forward these cases. Entonces, ¿cuáles son los de los desafíos que ya ha visto llevando a cabo? Bueno, yo considero que uno de los desafíos grandes es lograr que en, en Guatemala, pues, se... Eh, se, se rompe el sistema de corrupción y también la, la parcialidad que a veces hay en el sistema de justicia, ya que en Guatemala pues es, es bien difícil y complicado, digamos, acceder a la justicia, sobre todo el retardo que se, que se da en el sistema de justicia, porque a veces los jueces eh, penales, como tienen, eh, digamos, al, digamos, el criterio de poder suspender las audiencias sin, sin explicar mayores razones, las suspenden a veces se retarda demasiado y, y eso hace como incansable a las víctimas también de, de este proceso. Entonces yo siento que es uno de los retos que tenemos que, que romper y también eh, sobre todo a las mujeres que, que sigan persistiendo y, y que, que no se cansen en la búsqueda de justicia porque es lo que pretende también el sistema de justicia en Guatemala, ser retardado para que las mujeres... Eh, se cansen durante todo el proceso, tanto de, de manera eh, psicológica como también con los recursos económicos, que es desgastante. Entonces, al final, a veces desisten de los procesos y es, es común en casi en todo el sistema de justicia que pase eso. Cuando una víctima, digamos, actual denuncia un caso de violación o de violencia, cuando ya eh, dos o tres años después que que se recuerda de la denuncia, es bien complicado, entonces no, no se actúa de forma inmediata, igual como ha pasado en este caso de violencia sexual que ya se ha iniciado desde el 2011 y hasta la fecha estamos en etapa intermedia y todavía no hay una resolución que, pues, que va a pasar. Yeah. Um, so one of the biggest challenges that we face um, is to fight against and break the system of corruption and also the partiality of the judges and the justice system. Um, the justice system is really hard for most people to access and it's also extremely slow moving. Um, judges oftentimes suspend trials um, without any explanation and so the, the process just takes years and it's really exhausting for survivors. Um, and it's a real challenge for the women who are bringing the case forward um, because they get really tired out. Then um, the state, that's really the goal of the state is to wear people out um, psychologically and economically so that they can't go forward with these processes. And so it's really common that people will denounce a, a serious crime and including uh, sexual violence committed against them. And it takes years, it can take several years of follow up. So in this case, um, the original, um, the original uh, charge was put in um, uh, in 2011. And um, it, so it just, it's a long and slow process and it's exhausting. Tal vez otro de los retos que considero yo importante que también las mujeres pueden superar es el miedo a las amenazas que reciben constantemente de los familiares de las víctimas, ya que si ellos este, logran, digamos, controlar ese miedo por las amenazas, pueden lograr, este, digamos, estar siempre en el caso unido y eso ayuda porque le da fuerza a las demás mujeres y considero yo de que eso es uno de los retos que también las mujeres tienen, que es complicado a veces, pero... Pero las mujeres, cuando se hacen reuniones de grupo, ahí se ayudan a fortalecer y, y también se ha tratado de trabajar de, de forma con, con psicólogos con ella, a manera de que también mantener la unidad y la persistencia en el caso y estar sobre todo diciéndole cuál es, este, digamos, lo que inicial, inicialmente les motivó para denunciar los hechos y recordarles siempre para que ellos eh, olviden un poco lo, las amenazas y el miedo que provoca. Mm -hmm los familiares y la de las víctimas. And another challenge that the women face is the fear that they have um, based on the threats from the family members of the people who are accused of these crimes. Um, the family members oftentimes live um, close by and threaten the women who are bringing the case forward. 
Um, but if they can persist and stay unified together, um, it gives the full collective of women more strength. Um, and so they meet regularly so that they can strengthen each other um, and support one another in their meetings. And they also can have social psychosocial support. Um, and part of that is remembering what did cause fear for them or what was difficult about bringing this process forward. And then also in recognizing that they can um, see what, what made them keep going forward anyway. Um, and the last question that we would like to ask Gloria um, right now is to hear a little bit about how we as um, people from other parts of the world, um, the international community, um, can support in the case. Entonces, ¿cómo es que la comunidad internacional que está pendiente, cómo es que podemos apoyar en este caso? Bueno, yo creo que considero muy importante también el apoyo eh, de varias formas, por ejemplo, unos también tal vez informando, otros apoyando, así de la lucha de las mujeres que hacen, porque yo considero que estas mujeres han sido sobrevivientes y son muy eh, valientes, pero también en algún momento cuando hay amenazas, cuando hay intimidaciones en contra de ellas, a veces se desaniman, entonces el apoyo considero que es muy importante porque así ellos se dan cuenta de que eh, esas violaciones que ha pasado ha, ha trascendido también a, a otros países y también que son grandes vulneraciones a derechos humanos que han vivido y que tal vez en Guatemala no encuentran apoyo de las autoridades o de sus familias o de los vecinos, pero hay otras personas que pueden apoyar sus luchas. Um. So there's many ways that the international community can, can be involved. Um, they can uh, be informing people all around the world about what's going on in this case, um, and they can be taking action in favor of the, of the survivors. Their survivors are really brave, um, and it's incredible work that they're doing, um, but when there's constant threats and intimidations, um, it can really wear them down. So for them, seeing that there is international support, um, widespread around the world, and that this case has um, transcendence, like international transcendence um, for people in other countries, even when they don't feel supported by the state um, or by people around them, um, they know that like around the world that there's support for the work that they're doing. Muchísimas gracias. And thank you very much, Gloria. Um, we really appreciate uh, your words. And so now we'll pass it over um, to Doña Paulina who will be speaking a little bit, and, and Lisa will be translating. Thank you, everyone. Um, the first question we wanted to ask is if, Doña Paulina, if you could speak a little bit about your work with the bufete. So my work in the bufete, I'm the legal representative of the association. So the work that the bufete is doing is really important for me because they're bringing cases of many women who have suffered and survived by violence and also of us, the women who suffered during the internal armed conflict, sexual violence. We are organized, 36 women, and we are searching for justice. It has taken a long time. We started in 2011, up to, until now. We have reached the, that the aggressors are in jail, but we are asking the judge to give justice to us and against those who did da damage to us during that time. Because us, the women, we suffered in our own, in our own skin sexual violence, and it's painful. It's painful for us. So it's not fair that they're in their homes, living tranquil lives, and, it's, and only we are suffering. Because in those times, they did what they wanted to do. But for me, it's very important that we have to search for justice. 
Because what they did was damaging to our bodies. Why for you was it important to get involved with this case? It's important because if we don't search for justice and we don't say everything that happened to us, it could happen again. It could happen again. But if we let people know what happened in Rabina, so why this process is a collective of 36 women. Why was it important to bring this case forward as a group? It's important to organize ourselves in a group because if it's just one person, they won't listen to you. However, as a group, they, we get to know each other, we trust each other because it's not very easy that women tell what they, what they suffered because sexual violence. Often people feel like it's, it's embarrassing. But the organization of the bufete has really helped us. Where we feel better, we feel like we're able to talk about this. And what I feel, that in those times, for us, we were embarrassed. They saw what had happened to us. But now I feel like for them, it's embarrassing. Um, but that everyone knows what they did to us. Um, how did it start that the women came together? So we started to realize that the bufete was working on cases of, of, around women. So we started to look around to get justice. Mm -hmm. And what have been some of the challenges in bringing this case forward? What a person feels mm -hmm. that it takes a long time organizing with the with the bufete, and that the judges aren't interested in investigating the investigation that the public prosecutor has done. Mm -hmm. And what about in your communities? How have they reacted to the case? In my community, there's only three women that are part of the case. And so with, in our group, we talk about this, but in the wider community, they're not very involved in, in what's happening. And for me, it's important to talk about what we've suffered, the violence. Mm -hmm. Finally, the last question I wanted to ask is, what are some of your hopes for the future, both in the case, but also in your life? For me, it's important to search for justice. But it's also important for, for reparations, for fair reparations. Because they committed sexual violence against us. But they also killed our family members. They killed my sister, my brother, my uncles, my cousins, my nieces and nephews. And also, they burned our home. We suffered when we were in the mountains. They cut down our, our plants. They took our animals. They did many things. Mm -hmm. Just, that's it. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Matios.
So I think we're going to open it up now to questions from folks that are watching. I think there's been a few coming in. <clears throat> One has come in. Um, but feel free if you want to take a few minutes. I think you can write them in the chat. And we have some of our some folks here that can, uh, can pass those on to us. So the first question that we had was, when did the crimes actually occur? Entonces, la primera pregunta que hicieron era, ¿en, en qué temporada o cuáles son las fechas que ocurrieron los crímenes? Bueno, eh, estos hechos ocurrieron en el These año things happened? De, 18, de 1981 y 1985. Um, we also wanted to ask a Um, and there were the women survivors who achieved a sentence in Tepesarco in 2016. And so knowing about that case, um, has there been interaction with the women of Tepesarco and uh, the Mayachi women who are bringing this case forward? And so maybe we can send this to Paulina first. Okay. Okay. So we've always had the opportunity to meet up with them, to have gatherings of women. And so they often talked about their homes and also how they suffered sexual violence. So yes, we have the opportunity. Uh, y si yo recuerdo bien, ustedes estaban al día de, de la decisión, ¿verdad? Algunas mujeres. No sé si ustedes saben. Uh -huh. Que ustedes se fueron al juicio cuando decidieron la sentencia en el caso. Usted estaba ahí. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I was just saying, I remembered that many of the women from the case in Rabinal actually went to the, the sentence, the, to the decision of the judge in the Sepur Sarco case. Uh -huh. Bueno, yo... Creo que considero de que eh, se ha tenido relación las mujeres con las mujeres de Sepulzarco, pero también con las de casos de genocidio y Shil, ya que en este proceso, pues, este, las mujeres que han emprendido justicia, primero es importante conocer la experiencia y los obstáculos que han tenido para acceder a la justicia, ya que nosotros también en la búsqueda de justicia hay mucho, muchos obstáculos y nosotros eh, siempre pensamos que un caso que ha avanzado eh, tiene sus obstáculos y no queremos tropezar con lo mismo y tratar la manera de mejorar para ya no tener los mismos obstáculos y por eso es que se ha tenido relación de las mujeres con de, de Sepur Sarco y también con las de, de del caso de genocidio y Shil también. So what Gloria shared um, is that there's been a relation uh, with the women survivors of Sepur Sarko, as well as women survivors of sexual violence in the Ishil genocide case. Um, so in these uh, processes, as they're moving forward towards justice, they often meet pretty serious obstacles in, in the struggle for justice. Um, and so as cases go forward over time, um, like organizations and people who are bringing cases forward are able to learn from one another Um, and to see the obstacles that other people have faced um, and so that they can try to avoid those and um, more quickly achieve justice. Um, and for that reason, they've gone forward um, trying to create connections between um, the women who brought forward the Seprosarco case and the people who brought forward the Isha Genocide case. Y sobre todo para que las mujeres también no se frustren en el proceso de justicia, ya que eh, también se, ahí en esta manera se da a conocer qué obstáculos tuvieron ellos en, en el, la búsqueda de justicia y a manera de fortalecerlas también y, y no decepcionarse solo con un obstáculo que uno encuentra dentro del proceso de justicia. And so it's also a piece of it is so that the women don't get frustrated by these processes for justice. Um, because all of these, in all these processes, um, in the search for justice, they face obstacles. So it's a way to also strengthen them as they go forward in the search. Um, a question from Melanie Wilkinson is, since it's been so long, um, how do the investigators find out who the perpetrators were? 
cómo ha pasado muchos años, eh, cómo es que los investigadores del MP o, o del CEP eh, pueden saber quiénes son los hechores o pueden identificarlos y encontrarlos. Bueno, yo considero que eh, los hechores que están ahora en la cárcel son los autores directos, que las mujeres, de las 36 mujeres, no todas han reconocido sus victimarios, sino que eh, yo le decía, los, los que están ahora en la cárcel son las que han sido identificadas por las mujeres, eh, ocho mujeres que están dentro del proceso actual, ya que también en, dentro del conflicto armado interno, especialmente el Estado es el responsable por todos los planes militares que proyectó y la forma de cómo eh, mandó al ejército en las comunidades, todo eso tiene responsabilidad el Estado, que también es un caso que, como decimos, 36 mujeres, hay de esas 36 mujeres, solo como 10 o 8 han reconocido a las víctimas materiales, pero la responsabilidad estatal todavía eh, hay, todavía falta para que avance ese proceso, porque dependiendo de la resolución de la jueza ahora, entonces este el Ministerio Público va a plantear eh, imputación en contra de los altos mandos, eh, que son los que son responsables del Estado y como, como, como estructura estatal militar en la época de 1800, 1981 a 1985. Y eso está en los documentos de, de también la cadena de mando y todo eso, hay peritajes. So, um, the perpetrators, who were the direct material authors of these crimes, um, that they, eight women of the full 36, have been able to um, identify who were the ones who directly victimized them. Um, and those are the ones that are currently in jail and facing trial right now. Um, nonetheless, overall, the state is responsible for the crimes that were happening at that time. They put together the military plans that targeted civilian populations, and they sent the army into civilian populations um, to commit these horrific crimes against humanity. So when we're talking about 36 women, There are the eight who um, have identified their direct attackers, um, and then the 36 women are also trying to bring a larger trial against the intellectual authors of these crimes, um, the high-ranking military people who authored these plans. So uh, some of this will depend on the decision of the judge going forward and the public prosecutor after hearing um, that the case is going forward into a public debate um, has the opportunity to bring um, charges against the people who are in the highest levels of the military and the government at the time, um, and who can, uh, there are also witnesses, expert witnesses, who are able to um, provide a lot of proof around the chain of command and who would have been responsible for orchestrating this, these campaigns. Um. There's, there's another question that says, uh, in addition to the photo campaign, are there other ways that we can support this work for justice? Um, are there other actions that we can take? Um, Entonces, en, eh, vamos a hacer la campaña de fotos. Eh, y hay otras maneras que podemos tomar acción o, o apoyar nuestra solidaridad um, y apoyar a su caso. What will we ask? It's help. It's a help for us at the bufete. For us who need to bring forward the, the case? So we haven't been able to get to trial yet? So we don't know how long it's going to take. So financial support is also important to be able to bring these cases forward. Pues yo considero que eh, es bueno el apoyo que, que dan también, por ejemplo, con algunos ya lo han hecho, apoyando el caso, publicando eh, sobre el caso, 
y, y también, este, como, como decía doña Paulina, es importante porque a veces también, eh, o, o por ejemplo, dependiendo la resolución también, pues eh, la opinión de, de, de las organizaciones es muy importante eh, al respecto, porque también así la justicia guatemalteca, pues este también se da cuenta de que no solo nosotros se estamos pidiendo justicia aquí a nivel nacional, sino que también hay ojos que están observando este proceso y, y eso ayuda mucho en, en Guatemala, que, que alguien también de afuera está observando cómo va el proceso, porque como que en este caso se sienten más comprometidos, porque igual cuando las mujeres, este, nosotros eh, como abogada, yo voy en representación de las mujeres, pero no es igual que yo vaya, que también las víctimas van a apoyar a la audiencia porque la juez va a decir que yo soy o solo el bufete está interesado en reclamar esas denuncias pero cuando las víctimas llegan a la audiencia la juez como se siente más presionada viendo a las víctimas entonces puede ser que para ellos es tedioso pero también están ahí las víctimas pendientes de cómo va a resolver ella entonces eso ayuda mucho y también yo siento que el apoyo de que ustedes están publicando que van a apoyar a las mujeres que o decir, por ejemplo, la palabra, bueno, queremos justicia para las mujeres aquí, es, es muy importante. Entonces, eh, eh, igual la gente también que está a, a nivel local, si no está enterado del caso, se entera y se interesa también en llegar en la audiencia a apoyar a las mujeres acá. Um, so, one of the best ways to support um, is to continue. Um, communicating about the case and to share information about the case as it goes forward. Um, it's actually really important what opinions international and national organizations and people um, have about the overall process as it goes forward. Um, the Guatemalan justice system can see uh, that there are eyes watching really around the, full world, the whole world um, and that there's international observation of how the process is going forward. So um, she mentioned that as a lawyer, Um, she goes in representation of the women, but if only she shows up to court, it kind of looks like only the Rabina Legal Clinic is interested uh, in bringing the case forward. But if all the survivors show up, um, the judge can feel the, that the survivors themselves are watching to see what happens um, and are watching to see if the case is going forward well and fairly. And it's something similar when the international community can show up and show their support. Um, It provides more attention, it provides um, accountability, and it allows uh, also for there to be more coverage so that um, local people and like uh, the whole society um, can learn more and, and become involved. Um, we had another question for both Paulina and Gloria. Um, so the question is, what is the experience like for you, with a lawyer or as a survivor, being at the hearings? And so, ¿cómo ha sido la experiencia? adentro de las audiencias. My experience? I've seen that there. It get, what I've seen there gives me more um, courage to give my testimony. So right now we're only going there to watch but there's going to be a day when I have to give my declaration in the trial. And so I'm learning about all of this process when, and to be ready for when I give my testimony. But I was saying, Yo considero que como este caso también es un reto para mí como mujer eh, mayachi porque en, en, en Guatemala pues eh, existen pocas abogadas mujeres y sobre todo mayas. Entonces para mí es una muy bonita experiencia poder apoyar a estas mujeres porque yo las entiendo desde su idioma, desde, eh, desde su cultura y, y cuando yo hablo del caso de las mujeres siento que también eh, estas mujeres son mi mamá son, y, y han sufrido, siento yo de que en este caso siento el caso como que si fuera yo la, la persona también que, que ha sufrido eso y no es, no, 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 uno no puede 
eh, tolerar tanta violencia o injusticia que ha ocurrido a las mujeres. Entonces, en, también he aprendido mucho porque la juez que lleva el caso es muy estricta, pero considero yo también que, que en, la, en la fase de, de imputación ella es muy estricta, exigente, pero también eh, las, las veces que hemos tenido también ha resuelto lo que nosotros hemos deseado como querellantes o como representantes de las víctimas. Entonces es una bonita experiencia a mí también para mi carrera porque yo soy, apenas eh, voy a cumplir tres años de ser abogada, entonces también es un reto para mí eh, hacer esta experiencia y, y, y también me da mucho gusto poder apoyar y servir a estas mujeres. Okay. Um, so... Um, this case has some challenges for me as a woman um, who is a Maya Chi woman. Um, there are really few women lawyers in Guatemala, and there's even fewer um, who are, who are uh, indigenous Maya. Um, so I really actually love working with this woman. I really enjoy it. Um, I understand their language. I understand their culture. And when we're talking about this case, I feel what they're telling me as if like it's something that happened to my own mother or if it's something that happened to me. Um, we can't tolerate as society so much violence that has been committed against these women. And the judge has been, the judge on the case has been really strict and demanding, um, but has also resolved um, several times in favor of the women. Um, I've been a lawyer for a relatively short amount of time for just three years. And I've really enjoyed bringing this case and I've enjoyed um, supporting and, and serving these women. So um, maybe one last question. Um, and I think this is for Gloria again. Um, the question is if um, uh, the uh, prosecution team has been using the National Police Archives or the military plans which were found um, in the past few decades um, as expert uh, proof um, in bringing this case forward. Um, entonces, Gloria, la pregunta es si ustedes están usando el uh, Archivo Nacional de la Policía y los planes militares como um, medios de prueba para el En el Ministerio Público ha, ah, este... Dentro de los medios de investigación que ha aportado a la juez están los planes de campaña 82, el, el plan Sofía 83 y hay un 83, eh, 83-1. Y también hay algunos este, archivos de la policía que están en la, este, en la hemeroteca que también son documentos como fotografías eh, del contexto de Rabinal, del contexto del conflicto armado, así como también documentos del de la Comisión del Esclarecimiento Histórico, donde eh, qué tipo de violencia hubo en Guatemala, cómo afectó cada departamento, cómo, eh, a quiénes más afectó. Entonces, hay documentos como históricos que pueden probar la responsabilidad del Estado, así como también, eh, también se ha mencionado algunas sentencias que ha emitido la Corte en los casos de Mayachi y de, de, de Rabinal, como la... El, de la sentencia de la Corte Interamericana de, del caso de Río Negro, eh, del caso de Chichupac y del caso de Plan de Sánchez. Entonces son algunas eh, referencias que se uno le hace ver a la juez que hay suficientes elementos de investigación para que ella pueda resolver a favor de las mujeres. Um, yeah, so part of the um, documentation and evidence that the public prosecutor's office has presented in front of the judge for this case Um, are the military campaign plans um, that have been found over time. So that includes the military campaign plan for um, 1982, uh, the campaign plan Sofia in 1983, and a 19, plan 1983-1. Um, also, the National Police Archives have served um, for evidence, including providing photographs, providing information that have been collected about the context going on in Rabinal, and information about the context overall during the internal armed conflict. Um, we also have the documentation of the historic clarification report, um, which shows the people and the territories that were most affected um, by the military's plans during the internal armed conflict. We also have sentences from the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, um, the Rio Negro sentence, the Chichupac sentence, and the Plan de San Sanchez sentence. Um, and those previous sentences help set precedents to show the judge that there is sufficient evidence um, to move forward with this case. 
Um, so I think we're going to end the question and answer session there. And we are so thankful for you all um, for bringing such excellent questions um, and to Gloria and to Paulina for sharing, for sharing their responses about their experiences. Um, and now we're gonna hear a little bit from Lisa about uh, next steps that you all can take. Yeah, and we apologize we weren't able to get to everyone's questions this time, but I think this won't be the last time that we gather together here in Rabinal and, and speak with the women, so hopefully we'll be able to answer them then. So as Gloria mentioned, um, the trial continues, or the hearings continue tomorrow, where the defense is going to present their evidence, and we're expecting uh, then a few days, maybe an extended period of time for the judge to make their decision on whether or not the case goes to trial. And then after that, they have, there's also another phase of the presentation of the evidence, and um, and then and that could also take a number of days. So um, there was also a uh, development in the case only last week, where another former civil patroller was arrested in the United States, and so um, also related to this case. And so that process of um, bringing that that person to Guatemala to stand trial is also in process right now. Um, but we, we're happy to keep folks informed with the, with the ongoings in this trial as it, as it develops, of course. We also wanted to let folks know that we've, uh, as Breaking the Silence, have invited Gloria to come to Canada for a speaking tour, which will occur the last week of May around the Maritimes of Canada. So if you're in the area, please, um, please join us on a number of our speaking events. And finally, as someone mentioned earlier on the call, we're doing a campaign, a photo campaign of support and solidarity for the 36 women. Um, we're asking folks to take a picture of, with a message and send it to my email, which my colleague is gonna send right now uh, on the group chat. So make sure on, on the messages and don't close your chat with a leave, without copy and pasting it because if you do, they disappear. So we ask, we're asking folks to send a little message, email it to me, and I'm gonna get it, print them off and send them to the women so they have that um, those messages of support and going forward and of course translated if uh, for folks who don't uh, speak Spanish and um, so we'd ask you to do that and we'd encourage you right after this call to go ahead and take that photo and send it along um, and again this is recorded so you can find this call again online again we'd just like to say thank you so much um, to Paulina and to Gloria for sharing their time and, and their experiences with us today. And thank you all as well for coming here to learn more. And we'll just give one last opportunity in case they want to share any final words with you all before we sign off. También gracias por estar interesados en el caso de las mujeres de Achi. Y también esperamos su colaboración para que también publiquen cómo va el caso. So thank you so much um, for your interest in the case of sexual violence against um, the Mayachi women. And we're really um, hoping for your continued support and collaboration in publishing more about the case and keeping people informed. Porque nos visite en nuestro pueblo, porque en aquellos tiempos pues ya nadie nos, nos visitó y también igual que nosotros ya no pudimos hablar, solo este, aguantamos todo lo que, lo que pasó. So I just like to thank you for everyone that's come out and supported us and especially the folks here who've come to visit us in our community because um, during this time no one, no one was here and no one came to visit us and we weren't able to talk about what was what was happening in our community? Muchas gracias. All right. Thank you so much for joining, and please look forward for the recording.